these really add on top of your other build that you're already creating to kind of just specialize you a little bit more, create interesting group synergies, um, and also just, if you're a solo player, it lets you play the way you want to play. Yeah. Like, keep customizing. So, I mean, you mentioned that end game first philosophy. Uh, was that really something you took away from the Division One of giving players you know, a lot of things to do even after they finish the main campaign? Oh yeah, I think if you see the type of stuff we continue to add, right, through year one and year two, there were tons of different game modes, there were world expansions, there were Dark Zone expansions, all these things, and it's because the players who play this game are very passionate and they consume content, man, and you just always want to give them more stuff to play. It's, yeah. It's awesome. Absolutely. So yeah, we have the Sharpshooter specialization up right now. Um, yeah, let's look in uh, a little bit in depth in some of this gear. Yeah, so, you know, you can also see here that your normal gear that you're um, equipping, your six major slots, have brands associated with them now. Um, and that adds so much to the game because on top of you know, trying to get a really good set of knee pads, you're trying to combine brands together uh, in interesting ways as well. And it's just, it, I really think the, just the core loot game is gonna be super interesting in this one in, in a real evolution. Yeah, that's always what hooked me on the first division. Yeah. Uh, you can also see some of the new skills uh, in play here, like um, there's a support drone that you can actually, you know, pop out and it follows you around the battlefield. Um, and it makes, it, you just have an evolved sense of the shade tech from the first game. It feels like heightened. It's really cool. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. And so, you know, as you mentioned, the sharpshooter comes with the uh, the sniper rifle. That's his signature, or yeah. his or her signature weapon. Um, what other specializations are there? Yeah, so there's a demolitionist, um, and they have a rocket launcher. And then there's also a specialization that gives you a crossbow with an exploding tip arrow, which is, uh, you know, the, the fantasy about. of it is pretty pretty amazing. But the weapon is just kind of like the centerpiece of the specialization. Uh, just picking your specialization kind of adds to your toolbox. So it really opens up a whole new progression path, even past getting the weapon, which is, you know, that's the front and center thing, but there's a lot of interesting progression inside of the system. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's jump into the map a little bit and take cool. a look at DC. Yeah, so you can see here um, how big the map is compared to New York. So we're about 20% larger than the map we shipped within New York, which was, was already pretty massive. Um, the E3 demo uh, that people are playing kind of, you know, takes place just in this one little section. And as you start pulling back the map from there, um, you can really see how much variety we're going to get out of this. Even at this very high level, you can see the, the difference between the really wide open spaces um, and start seeing all those different environments. Um, so you can see, you know, up in Georgetown, uh, it's a very suburban feel. Um, and versus, you know, down here where most of the monuments are, like the capital that you can see in the background of the, uh, of the demo. Yeah, and you know, as you said, it's completely open around the capital. That's something you, we didn't see a whole lot of in the No, absolutely, one. absolutely, right? There's a lot of uh, those tall skyscrapers kind of create some corridors for you, and it's really refreshing to be able to see some one-story buildings and mm -hmm. some just the different feel that that creates. And so how does that, how does that translate to gameplay? You know, I think the biggest thing is that you feel like you can attack uh, encounters from so many more angles than last time, right? Like, um, you know, in, in the demo you start and you're coming in from one angle, but that's an open world activity. So you can imagine you're leaving the Capitol building, you come from the other side, that plays out so differently. Things feel more open because you have more options of how you want to engage the fights. Yeah, and so, I mean, I think that that variability is extremely obvious. When, when we jump into the demo, we'll see it a little, in a little bit. But when you're making all these different, you know, neighborhoods, like you said, there were, there were sort of two different ones in the Division One. Yeah. And now there's, there's many, many more. Um, how, how do you go about connecting those? How do you make them all feel part of the same world? Well, the cool thing is, you know, it's all in the city, right? So uh, the city planner kind of did a lot of this for us. And when we bring that in, the fact that we have a nature biome now, right? We have a nature environment that feels totally natural and is, is, that creates such a different type of gameplay, taking cover on trees, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's just something, um, something that really changes the game at a core level. Um, and it's as you flow between these different environments, you really feel like you're progressing through the city and exploring, you know? I want people, and we all want people who kind of explore this map, 
to be able to go into DC and kind of have the lay of the land. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things that DC is one of the most recognizable cities in this country, obviously, yeah. uh, mostly because of its monuments, right? Um, how many of those did you get to put into this game? So, you know, the monuments are a huge deal in DC, right? Like, there's iconic things that we all see so much in pictures and on, in movies and all these stuff that if you've even never been to DC, you kind of have an idea of how special, like, you know, the White House is or the National, Mon uh, the Capitol building and all these things. Um, so, you know, a lot of them are in there and you can see them on the map here, you know, like we have, um, a little north here, you know, the White House. Yeah. There's things for Washington you to explore, Monument. find, Washington Monument. Um, there are, you will be able to explore the map and, and find those things because, you know, it's the one-to-one -one recreation and yeah. we want you to really feel like you're in DC. Yeah. And, you know, I think if we, we jump back out of this. Lincoln uh, Memorial. Of the map, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Lincoln, Jefferson, Roosevelt Island. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Roosevelt Island really like shows off that natural biome we were talking about. Yeah. Totally. And, and I mean, and then even the Air and Space Museum. We're here. We're looking oh, yeah. at another museum. Um, and I just, I love the the amount of realism that it feels like, like you guys put into this, the believability that this is what DC might look like if something like this happened. Yeah, you know, we wanted to make it we wanted to make it feel real. We wanted to make it feel like seven months had passed. We wanted you to feel the heat uh, of what that city is like in summer when it started to flood and it's a little nasty, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, in the background here, you can see the Gallery of Modern Art. And it's those types of things that, you know, like the Air and Space Museum, right? Like exploring the city and really getting to see these monuments up close and personal you know, in a way that you would never be able to do in reality. Yeah. What I think shows really well here and what, again, the Division One did such a good job of is that environmental storytelling. That oh you can walk yeah. through an area, a neighborhood, and find out what happened, right? right? We could see here what exhibition was showing at the Gallery of Modern Art. You know? you know, one really interesting thing is that, you know, this, the outbreak happened here at Christmas time as well. So we're in the summer, but you still see those remnants of Christmas. Um, like, famous Christmas trees that are really up in DC at that time of year are still there, but they're, they're dead and their ornaments are hanging on them, you know? And you get that sense of no one ever cleaned this up mm. and time passed and nature came out yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, it's bad enough faux pas leaving your Christmas tree up at New Year's, let alone <laughs> yeah. well into summer. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's a really great point that, yeah, this, the outbreak hits at all at the same time. Um, what happens when it's seven, you know, six months down the line um, and you know, how do you deal with that? Uh, so next up, we, we gave a little tease of it before. Uh, I think we have another trailer to show. Uh, that'll